what I was going to do is just follow the shoreline right over to the Hoover Dam. All the water will be up that side. My first reaction to this was I was really angry. When this drought started, and as it got deeper and deeper, I got really angry. The preparation we could have made, the decisions we could have done differently, had we known that this was going to happen, it, it just makes you angry. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. This works like a plumbing system. Once you get to Lake Powell, this is no longer a river. It seems like we have all of these other pressing issues and water never really makes it to the top of national discussion until the tap is dry. The Hoover Dam on the Colorado River was designed as a crowning achievement of engineering, a temple to our ability to shape the natural world. It is the heart of the water supply for the American West and a powerhouse for irrigation and electricity, a memorial to progress, and yet the rings surrounding this lake bear witness to a tale of short-sighted consumption. Alexandra, this is the 130-foot-high bathtub ring that has uh, established itself since 2000. Every year since then, the reservoir has lost about 12 feet of height. It's so impressive. I don't think people realize how much water this really represents. So that's a year's worth of flow in the whole river there. 15 million acre feet, enough for maybe 30 million or 45 million Americans for one year. You know, there are people that, that say this will never ever fill up again, this reservoir, because of the use and because of climate change. So this may be what this reservoir now looks like from here on out. At its full capacity just 10 years ago, Lake Mead now sits more than half empty. Since 1997, consumption has overtaken supply a trend that cannot be sustained. This system and the millions of people that depend on it are on a course towards collapse. In some ways, the, the battle lines in the Colorado River are between three distinct parties, one of which doesn't have a voice, the environment, two of which do have loud voices, agriculture and municipalities. And the solution in the future involves all, all three of those, some kind of harmonious resolution of the water wars that have played out and probably will continue to play out. You gotta get all three of those entities at the table and, and, and working to come up with some solutions. What I tell, what I try to get people to realize, it all starts with water. You take the water away, there is no Denver, there is no Las Vegas. Water is the primary element all life is based on, period. We're in a drought. There is not enough water in that river, which is totally over-allocated. Agriculture has a tremendous stake in, in the water. When, there, when you're talking cities, you're talking a small amount of water compared to what an agricultural person needs. It is not in the environment's best interest to destroy cities because what do people do? They then sprawl everywhere. And areas that are now today pristine are not going to be pristine anymore. Our feeling here in the Imperial Valley uh, has to be that, uh, that uh, people need to eat. And, uh, and agriculture is uh, um, at least as important as, uh, as urban development. It's, it's insane, and it's on a treadmill that is not going to stop because our civilization is just, that's the way they've learned everything. Generation after generation after generation has learned that all we have is plenty. And we do not always have plenty. Ten years ago, you never would have imagined the bathtub rings no, in Lake Mead. No, because there was more water and you knew what to do with do you think in 10 years from now, the situation might be just as unimaginable? Yes. I've heard so many estimates about how long it'll take to refill Lake Mead and Lake Powell. I think it is a mistake to believe they'll ever fill again. 
It takes just a couple of dry winters for cities in the West to face historic water shortages. Yet still, demands on the river continue to grow. All sides of the debate stand opposed, and yet we will all suffer the collapse of the Colorado together. Until we change and we stop running it down the street, running it down the gutter, being completely oblivious to our water supply, or feel any sense of responsibility for the use of that resource, we're just gonna keep dancing. We have a mess on our hands. We have gotta act ahead of it, and that means acting 50 and 75 and 100 years ahead of the problem, not waiting until it, it's right in our faces. You know, I think there are two paths forward here. One is a, is a grim looking forward future where we continue down the path we've been on, where we ignore our natural environment. And the other future is actually pretty promising where we begin to understand the limits on this plan, including water, including energy, and it's a really clear choice to me. The Colorado River highlights a global challenge for our generation. We must get beyond the legacy of entitlement and demand innovation in how we manage and use our water. And we must recognize the responsibility we have to leave enough water in nature to ensure we pass on a viable planet to future generations.